Hey everybody, Andrew here. So, I wanted to wait to do this till later, but I'm, I'm just getting too overwhelmed right now with all the influx of sites and alternative images that I'm finding and angles. And ultimately guys, I need your all's help to help me understand what I'm looking at because I've had to put this collection down a few times for, for a few days and and just not look at it and not not look into it any further. I've, I've had a lot of doubts about what I look at and uh, a lot of second guesses. So I, I like to walk away from it for a little bit and uh, you know after a few days I might see something coincidentally that'll bring me back and I'll add another picture so I want to give you all today a crash course introduction into my research into the bevel blocks or the beveled blocks in stonemason terms they're called margins and these are a huge mystery bigger than I ever knew so I don't know what's going to go on with the picture rights. I'm going to show a lot of pictures, uh, the highest quality I could find. So I don't know how long this video is going to stay on the internet, but I have a lot to show you guys and I'm going to try to go through it as quickly as I can because there's a lot and I want to try to cover all of it in one video. But I also want to point out some key details that that really make my argument that if you ignore the details the, the the argument falls apart so again I need your all's help to tell me what I'm looking at and I need feedback about my hypotheses because I'm not gonna keep all this information to myself and write a masterpiece book or anything like that I, I just I want to present information and I stand on the shoulders of giants all my subscribers that are in my list have helped me to realize what I have so far come to identify. So without any further ado, let's get started. Strap your belt on. Strap your belt on, kid. We're going in. Okay, everybody. A few things I want to mention before we begin. This album is public, and I will provide the link for it in the description of the video. You are more than welcome to comment and give me feedback. If you would like to do it on YouTube, that's fine too, but if you have maybe a specific question or a specific comment, you can leave it on each of the posts, whichever post uh, is appropriate. And another thing, I... Um, I want everyone to understand this is an ongoing research project, so the organization is pretty haphazard. Um, I've tried to include all supplementary pictures I can and organize them accordingly, but the way I'm going to present it to you is the way it has been developing, which is from the first site I made the connection, uh, the following three or four sites after that were sites I had uh, recalled from memory that I had remembered other hallmarks and the ones after that are literally an Easter egg hunt that I spent a week or two scouring the internet looking at the best pictures the, the, the highest quality pictures I could find and just trying to find these connected hallmarks and the last thing I want to mention is I, for the most part, understand the orthodox datings and associations for a lot of these sites. Some of these sites are going to be pretty controversial, even to me, and they um, they may even hurt the credibility of my research. So if I could get some help and some feedback from you guys on some of those sites, we'll get to those a little later. Um, I would actually like to have them off my list if they are uh, bogus because they 
hurt the hypothesis. But um, if they prove to be a connected, authentic example, then I think somebody has some explaining to do. But uh, I'm, I'm going to include it because it has the hallmarks and I have to include every site that I find that has the hallmarks. Some sites may be incorrect and false um, associations, but I'm going to show you the raw research as I am finding it. So we'll start with Baalbek, Lebanon. Now, for some of these sites, I'll be able to give you some additional information. Um, some other ones, they're going to be just as new to you as they are to me. So you'll have to go to Wikipedia like I did and just read what you can on them. Um, a lot of them you're going to see for the first time. And some, some of these, they might even be the only the third or fourth time I'll be looking at them. So again, this is really... Um, in progress research and uh, I'll try to give you as much additional information as we go as my brain will let me remember so again let's start with Baalbek um, you the prerequis prerequisites for uh, this course is uh, pretty much all of Brian Forrester's work and all of Hugh Newman's work and uh, Chuck's work and um, Ancient Architects work and Graham Hancock's work basically everybody's talked about this site and a lot of people know about this site um, obviously, the Trilithons are the star of the show. They're the most uh, impressive. Uh, allegedly, I think there's some more impressive things going on here besides just some big old blocks. Um, yeah. Uh, so they're big, right? Yes, they're very big. And it was very hard to move them, yes. And the Stone of the Pregnant Woman is very interesting. And uh, that quarry is very interesting. Um, but let's we'll, we'll stay on track here. We'll try to uh, stick to the hallmarks again. Um, oh, one thing I do want to say um, in in response to um, some criticism that uh, Graham Hancock got for uh, one of his ideas um, or one of his uh, rebuttals, actually, to um, one of his ideas. Uh, someone had uh, either he or someone had pointed out a column drum in the lower portion of the third row of blocks of the foundation and that was supposed to be evidence that the whole structure was rebuilt and reorganized um, and that the, um, the, the, the all the wall on top of the column drum was supplementary and not original so what we see in some of these older pictures it's, it's really actually kind of hard to find is there's actually a fourth row of masonry underneath the third row so any column drum plonked into the third row would not have been something that they built upon as a foundation it would indeed be maybe at ground level these go down pretty far um, in other areas down uh, 10 20 feet so I'm not even sure if we know yet where the bottom of this structure is uh, again, you're going to have to watch a lot of other subscribers' videos on this site to get the whole information on these sites, and I don't want to divert too much from the topic. So, everyone talks about these and this wall. I find the lower portion also interesting, the, the angles on these blocks, uh, the fact that they kind of kick out right here, and the, the, the faceted nature of these blocks. They're pretty big. This one itself wraps around the corner. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many. I think there's four, maybe five on this side. There's there, there's a lot of these blocks as well. They're pretty big, uh, almost an equal feet. So on top of them is the bevel blocks. Now, a lot of people would say, well, these are just um, reorganized and restacked blocks. And um, in a lot of instances, and in a lot of cases, they actually are right. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different sites they're right as well. But um, I think that the bevel blocks themselves in these lower areas where you see them really tightly fitted and the rows are very straight and there's no gaps, I think this is actually original construction and not a later 
stonemason's decorative uh, addition or um, re-engineering of the site. I am proposing that all sites that incorporate tight-fitting bevel blocks are indeed original constructions. And the builders of these constructions I have mentioned are these megalithic unknown previous peoples that we still do not have a very good grasp of who they were. So the, this is the main hallmark that I could remember from this site that no one else had mentioned. This was the first real instance of, hey, those blocks are very weird looking. And I, I wonder why they chose to make each one a different size. They're not like bricks where they're stacked two, one, two, one, two, one. They're, every one has its own dimensions and some of them have uh, angled sides. So they aren't all even square, which I thought was pretty, you know, odd. It's if it's uh, a stonemason making these, he could, you know, he could make right angles and and regular sizes. Um, and even if he was to to be rebuilding out of rubble, um, again, if you're rebuilding out of rubble, you can do a better job of, you know, uh, appearance-wise of making the blocks cleaner and be more uniform. So it's almost like a polygonal style at, in this example, the way they're, the angles of the sides aren't quite 90 degrees and each block is a different dimension. But in later examples, we're going to see high, highly uh, uniform and formal uh, motifs that um, they, they, they still look similar in terms of execution. But uh, it's just a, um, it's, it's almost like they chose a finer level of detail at, at different sites and cruder levels of detail at other sites. I'm, I'm going to propose maybe that some sites were um, city uh, peaceful dwelling sites and other sites were forts and defensive structures. And maybe it's at these defensive structures that we see the less attention to formality and u uniformity. So one thing we have to look at in addition, uh, another anomaly that uh, one of the guys at the LAH.RU crew mentioned is the square holes. Now these square holes can be you know, easily dismissed as lifting uh, connect connecting points for bars, uh, timbers, uh, and then tackle and rope. Um, or they could be used for um, hanging or, or um, uh, ornamentation, things like that. But I'm going to propose, because they go along with these bevel blocks and they're at almost every single site, I'm going to propose that these are also hallmarks of processing of some kind of high technology processing. Now in the lah.ru Baalbeck video, I'll put that one in the description as well. That one's really in important because that gives you a really good um, high quality look at some of these stones and what he's talking about and what I'm talking about. But these square holes in modern times are used to hang um, electrical cords for um, Con, like really large construction projects, um, you'll see them in quarries. Um, he shows examples in the LAH documentary. Um, that's just an interesting aside. Um, I'm not sure if that was the original purpose for these. The the placement that I see them in in some of these sites, they the only way I can describe them is they appear to be missing pixels of the structure, as as though just random square portions. Sometimes they're small and deep and other times they're large and just shallow depressions. And they also appear at corners very frequently, sometimes decoratively, sometimes randomly. But these square holes are another hallmark. They are not just the simple um, moving aids that we have been told that they are. And this may go to uh, this may extend to the, the circular holes as well in other um, sites, but 
the the patterns of the square holes seem to me to follow the sites where I look for bevel blocks. So I'm going to try to point those out as well and some other strange processing anomalies uh, that, that I think people are, are ignoring or just, uh, you know, they're, they're not, not noticing. But the first things that struck me at this site was this corner, the bevel blocks and the square holes. And from there, it got stranger and stranger. Now, these are some additional photos that I added just today, just a few minutes before I started making the video. Um, I wasn't even intending to add any more, but I was looking into the site for another reason and just had to uh, stop after looking at all the pictures I've looked at and um, kind of reevaluate re some of my um, older ideas. So I want to look at this structure here and the structures in the background and I want to talk about the proposals of these structures being rebuilt structures um, now I know and hopefully you all have seen some things about this site this site has been conquered and taken over and repopulated by different groups of people over a long period of time so there are going to be styles, uh, architectural styles and motifs that um, are going to overlap and it's going to get confusing. So I want, I want to stay focused though on the hallmarks that we're mentioning because those are going to keep us on the right track and lead us in the right direction to the authentic structures and this, maybe some of these other ones might be legacies, imitations. We got to keep that in mind too. The, the style later on may have become uh, fashionable. Uh, indeed, you can go and look on uh, stonemasons' websites, and um, you'll see that the, they'll they'll uh, categorize the bevel block as a, a stonemasons decoration technique, uh, a way of facing the block. So uh, that's a really reductionist, simple uh, explanation for. What I'm seeing, um, I know that technique is possible with a flat chisel and uh, a, a striking device and um, just working the stone from an angle, chipping away the corners on all sides and fitting them together. Um, that, that's, that is a, a way that stones can be placed together. Uh, but again, I propose that there's more than that going on here. Some of the connections are just a little bit too odd and some of the uh, anomalies get a little bit too strange. So. I, I want to propose all these sites and, and we're going to look at, at them all and judge them all and I hope you all give each one your own uh, scrutiny and just, uh, you know, if, if you guys think I'm, I'm wrong on any of these, please give me feedback or if you maybe have any other ones I might not include, please give me those because this is really exhausting trying to find all these pictures. So again, bevel blocks, you're going to see these at the lower portions and they're going to be fitted together pretty well. But what I've come to find is that as the structures rise, the um, appearance of the bevel blocks tends to fade away. And you'll see still tight fitting dry laid stones, but you, the, the, the bevels will kind of taper or just uh, cut off and disappear. Um, usually uh, at a borderline, like uh, the, where these are, these are called cornices. They, they go over doorways on lintels. You know, the big blocks are lintels. You have the cornice and so sometimes they're decorative and they wrap around the buildings. Um, a lot of these uh, architectural styles you might want to talk to uh, ancient architects about or um, uh, Randall Carlson to get some more uh, in-depth information. I'm no architect, I just have a couple books on architecture. So uh, all I can tell you is that some of these styles might be associated to classic Greek and Roman styles, but let's try to stay uh, true to the sites and um, to the to the hallmarks and the patterns that we see and I think we're gonna start seeing some uh, coincidences that become a little bit too too much to be coincidences so the lower buildings sometimes have these arches as well now arches come in all shapes and sizes uh, but I, for the examples I'm going to show most of them tend tend to have a uh, a similar shape and and some of these uh, window 
patterns tend to be uh, similar as well, as well as what's called the coping on a lot of these uh, sites. They have a top piece or a top, uh, uh, you know, a deflective rain guard or something, and it'll it'll be the coping stone along the top. Uh, these top parts will get pretty interesting and pretty unique at sites. Um, so these can get pretty wild. Uh, like, like you can see these little protrusions here, and uh, these little structures here. Are these holes underneath? These uh, little. Um, uh, extensions is the only thing I know to call them um, and then here some of these blocks seem like they extend uh, like they meant to do that uh, it wasn't just uh, you know laziness and I, I start seeing some square holes and then I start seeing some more square holes and I notice that the square holes aren't on all the blocks um, sometimes they're on smaller blocks and not on larger blocks sometimes I see the square holes uh, going in between two blocks uh, I start seeing um, you know traces of nubs down here at the bottom too so I start saying okay what, what's going on here I, is, is I thought all this was supposed to be rebuilt and um, there wasn't any real original uh, pre-roman structures here so this this got pretty interesting pretty fast you know, here you can see oh look by the way that's a bricked up window you know where the other window used to have a match so a lot of sites you have to be really uh, keen in your eyes in your and your uh, your focused attention to de detail because a lot of these sites you got to remember have been um, you know repaired or uh, you know elements uh, taken out or um, repurposed so you know like in this instance they didn't need a window anymore so they they bricked it up so you know keep in mind that the the layout of, of the original structures are gonna are gonna change a lot as we go so um, oh by the way over here you see a polygonal wall. Uh, you know, some would say, "Oh, well, this is old, or this is older, or is it's maybe it's rubble, rubble from a destructive, uh, destroyed structure." Uh, plausible, but you know, I also see little square holes in it, and it looks, um, it just looks uh, rough on purpose, almost. You could say, like, kind of like the, uh, the 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 walls of South America. Uh, they're just, uh, you know, as far as uh, uniformity and uh, if as it like uh, they had a plan no they, they just kind of threw these blocks together as they went and um, you know, we still don't know how they did that I don't really want to get into you know how on these processing anomalies because I don't know half the time and or pretty much 99% of the time I don't know so this is all this is up to all of us to to figure out together so another thing I will point out uh, this this structure in the back this also looks to be original it has the same tight fitting stones uh, with no uh, anomaly stones like you don't see a random piece of coping stuck in here anywhere you do see some square holes again and uh, what I want to point out at a lot of sites is you'll see grass growing in the sides of these walls and first you don't think anything of it you're just like okay it's grass growing in the cracks and yeah there is grass growing in the cracks but I'm gonna propose at a lot of these sites that these little tufts of grass are actually growing in square holes so they're actually obscuring a lot of the evidence naturally you know you know kind of quirky here just these little innocent grass tufts not doing anything not bothering anybody but they're they're really hiding the evidence from everybody and uh, we'd have to go pull them all out to see whether or not they are so uh, let's go to another picture here well have I made anybody mad yet I'm sure I've made a few people mad in the comments if anybody's even gonna comment after some of the things I've just said so I know right off the bat you guys that some of the things you know experts and other fans of history and historians will say well obviously that's a feature of, of the the castle uh, for defensive purposes and um, you know th these these are obviously for um, you know attaching uh, you know platforms and and, and everyone's gonna have a, a nice practical ex uh, explanation for a lot of the things I'm talking about but um, I, I really think that some of these sites get so anomalous that uh, that it's almost like um, that these are all you know older sites that the ideas that were in, encoded and enshrined into these sites were just re readopted and and uh, the later peoples just kind of figured out why these uh, structures were here and and how to use them basically. So uh, again, this is supposed to be all rebuilt. Now, you'll see a lot of bevel blocks, and again, like I said, bevel blocks are usually, the big ones are found low, and they're normally like a, a foundation uh, stone, and then everything on top of that will get smaller and more uh, uh, more finely dressed on, on the surface. There won't be any uh, 
bevels, but we will see some instances of bevels going up into the higher levels of the structures, uh, sometimes from top to bottom. So to see them up high is not necessarily evidence that the structure was rebuilt. And gaps as well, we will start seeing gaps that will ba basically technically be square holes and they will almost appear to be intentional. And another feature that I forgot to point out that we're gonna start seeing is small filler stones. Uh, you'll see these in Cusco. Uh, we're gonna see them later there and uh, in other South American sites and uh, all across Europe. They're, they're, they're uh, a hallmark. They're, they're just like um, someone decided where there was a, a corner missing. Usually they're always corners. Uh, there's a small piece missing and sometimes they'll put a little uh, finishing stone in there and other times they'll leave it out and it'll just stay a square hole. Now, I don't know if these kind of square holes had purposes. They seem sometimes pretty anomalous, but other times they clearly seem to have had a purpose. And in some photos, we will actually see where cornices were attached to these kind of square holes. Some of them will still be attached so we know that in some instances, they were indeed used as architectural uh, decorative elements. Uh, you know, cor cornices are kind of functional too. You know, if, if it's raining, it kind of keeps the rain off the edge of the building on the bottom. You know, it keeps the, the, the edge of the foundation kind of dry. You know, I, we, we should know the, 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 even if we don't know the, the fancy terms for some of these uh, uh, motifs and designs, uh, we, we've seen them all. We can go outside and look at our house, and, and we've seen some of these architectural elements. So they're not foreign to us. And I think, I think the whole point of this thing is that the, that's the reason: is that everything is a legacy from these kind of sites. So uh, again, this is Baalbek at a different location. Some of these could be restacked. I find these coping stones on top pretty interesting. We're going to see those become stair step in other instances. Um, so those might be original. Uh, just because there are small filler stones, it doesn't necessarily mean that those were added later. Sometimes it was intentional. Um, sometimes we'll see big, big stones in uh, odd places for what apparently looked like no reason, just be to be impressive or because they could. I don't know. Um, so a lot of these sites are going to start getting confusing and uh, just want to want to point out some of the, the things that I know that you guys are thinking and that I thought the first time I started looking at these pictures. Now you'll see some of the uh, the stones kind of they must have a, a rounded uh, concave profile so they match the the convex profile of the column that's kind of interesting this is a big single piece I believe that's pretty interesting the way it's uh, like like everybody says like a lathe it's, it's pretty smooth looking um, let's see, this might also be a trapezoidal door, um, not sure, but we're going to start seeing a lot of trapezoidal doors, that's another hallmark, so uh, I'll try to point out as much as I can on each of these pictures, that's pretty much all I've noticed, I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of people mad uh, because I leave out things as we go, but that's good because that means you're seeing stuff that I'm forgetting and not seeing, so uh, again right here, before we change over, this might have actually been an original window, you can see how the very top pieces come together, almost parallel there, maybe maybe that is parallel, and you can see the way the bevel continues all the way around and kind of frames what this once was. So uh, we, we might be looking at damage here from in these other areas, uh, dis destroyed from, um, you know, who knows, cannons and, and, and explosions. Uh, they could be natural cataclysms. There, there could be combinations of all kinds of damage at these sites, so we have to account for all of it. So, like again, uh, keep, keep an open mind on these sites and understand I do know most of the Orthodox history, and uh, we're, we're just going to try to ignore the dating on a lot of these sites. We can, all, you can go look it up on Wikipedia if you want, uh, but, but we're just going to we're going to kind of just look at these sites as as ruins and what they are as as as, as uh, physical, you know, the physical evidence. So we're, we're, we're going to try not to be swayed by dating or attribute, uh, you know, attributions at this point. You know, I might bring some of those up later just to help identify. But, uh, you know, as far as the, the original builders go, I really don't think we should be uh, giving the associations uh, to who we currently do. So uh, it looks like this is probably going to be a long, 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 long video. So we're going to cut this into parts. Um, 
I'll see how many more I can get here in about half an hour, and then we'll do maybe half hour videos. So, onward into the strangeness.